Hello friends, so continuing our explorations into uh, consciousness fields, quantum fields, electromagnetic fields, perception, cognition, the brain, the mind and body, continuing all that. Uh, let's try a simple experiment, okay? so. As I'm speaking to you, just follow my instructions. Raise your hand. Now look there. Look there. Look there. Look there. Now say something. Okay. Say, let's say, say the sentence, the rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Say it out aloud. Okay. Now smell your hand. Chase your hand, make the sound. Okay, as you did all this, you were listening to me and following my instructions. So let's track the sequence of this whole phenomenon. I had a thought to share these ideas with you. So I went on my computer, I went on Zoom, and I started speaking <clears throat> and uh, the whole thing started with an intention. This is what I wanted to share. That intention was in consciousness. But as soon as I started to orchestrate that intention, your brain, my brain, actually, as soon as I started to orchestrate this intention, <clears throat> that intention which was somewhere in consciousness or arose in consciousness, occurred in consciousness, was known in consciousness, that triggered brain activity, which is mainly electrochemical. <clears throat> and then that brain activity triggered the vibration of my vocal cords and then everything followed. Electromagnetic uh, uh, the propagation of electromagnetic waves went through the walls of this room, some went through what we might say um, wires under the sea, through routers, in some remote places maybe they bounced off a satellite. Uh, these, uh, this propagation of electromagnetic uh, frequencies uh, of uh, uh, of actually a low amplitude, long wavelength. They went everywhere because some of you might have been in Africa, Vietnam, South America, wherever they spread out everywhere. Theoretically, you could be on the moon. Spread out everywhere and then got into whatever device you have and that device uh, showed an image and produced the sound um, emanating. But it actually didn't. All that device did was uh, uh, convert the signal I sent into another signal. And uh, that signal then uh, came to you in the form of, uh, of a wave of vibration of the atmosphere and also in the form of photons coming to your brain uh, through you know various senses so when i asked you to say hear me then the information came from here uh, look at me information came from the eyes i said smell taste make a sound information came in various ways but all ultimately translating into electrochemical activity in your body and then the propagation of electrical signals to your brain. And once it arrived in your brain, somehow the current theory says you heard me and you saw me on your screen. Now, the first step, my thinking and how it got converted into activity in the brain, which then made my vocal cords vibrate, made my uh, muscles twitch and so on. Uh, and 
that first part, how that thought converted into biological response is unknown. That's part of the hard problem of consciousness. And in your case, as you receive the information, then all the first part of the information, it's known, you know, it's uh, electrochemical signals, etc, cetera, etc, cetera. electromagnetic signals, converting into electrochemical signals, converting into brain activity. But that last step, when you heard me, or you saw my image, that is unknown, even when you smell your own skin, or taste it, or look at yourself. Uh, the initial steps are all electrochemical. And then the last step is brain activity. But that part where you hear me and see me, that's part of the heart problem. How does that get into experience? So let's dissect this a little bit. I would say that the initial intention started in the consciousness field. And then it entered the what we call the quantum field. And then it was modified into the electromagnetic field. And then when it got to you finally, that whole process then went backwards, elect, you know, the electromagnetic field converted into electrochemicals and neural networks got activated and you heard me. Both the first step and the last step are unknown. So how does the consciousness field modify itself into the quantum field and then the electromagnetic field and then the electro chemical field and then end up again in the consciousness field, because that's what's happening. Now, conventional science doesn't have an answer either to the first step or the last step. But let's see the relationship for a moment between what science calls the quantum fields and the electromagnetic field. So quantum field theory is a fundamental framework in physics that describes all known particles as excitations of an underlying quantum field or quantum fields. Every type of particle, electron, photon, etc., has its own corresponding field that extends throughout all of space and time. The electromagnetic field, QFT, is a specific quantum field. Electromagnetic interactions, light, electricity, magnetism, are the result of interactions between the electromagnetic field and electricity, electrically charged particles like electrons. And then there are photons. The fundamental excitation of the electrical electromagnetic field is called a photon. We typically think of photons as particles of light, but more broadly, broadly, they represent the basic unit by which electromagnetic forces are carried. Now, there's a, a whole um, discipline in physics called quantum electrodynamics, or QED. This is the specific quantum field theory that describes the electromagnetic field and its interactions with charged matter. <clears throat> it is one of the most precisely tested and successful theories in all of physics and capable of making incredibly accurate predictions about the behavior of light and charged particles. <clears throat> so what's the connection to consciousness? Well, this is where things get significantly more speculative in science and complex. Because in science right now, there's currently no established scientific theory that links consciousness directly to quantum fields. But I just showed you an experiment that it does. So here is why this is a tricky area from the point of view of science. <clears throat> Once again, it comes to the hard problem of consciousness. 
Consciousness is what philosophers call the hard problem. We have no good scientific understanding of how subjective experience, feeling, awareness, uh, the sense of I arises from the physical matter of the brain. Now, of course, I mentioned that the physical matter of the brain is a modified form of consciousness itself and actually is an expression also in the deeper reality of the quantum field and the electromagnetic fields. And that much we know from science that, you know, strong, weak, strong and weak interactions, electromagnetism are all in all connected or all the same force. So some interpretations of quantum mechanics, of course, suggest that consciousness plays a fundamental role in wave function collapse, which is the process by which um, quantum possibilities become definite realities. So there is a connection, isn't it, between consciousness, its modification into the quantum field, its further modification to electromagnetic waves propagating through space-time, its further modification in you as electrochemical activity and electrochemical activity in the brain, the neural correlates of experience. Obviously, we are seeing experience starting in consciousness, going through all these fields and then ending in consciousness. I don't see how, how anyone can argue against this. <clears throat> and yet, today's science um, is arguing about this. It's obvious that our conscious intention seems to precede actions and also our conscious attention also is responsible for the sensory experiences we have. You didn't listen to me. I was shouting at you. You didn't listen to me. Where were you looking when you had this accident? You know, even though everything was happening, you weren't seeing it. So you see, consciousness is required to initiate any experience and consciousness is required to receive any experience. And it's not possible to get consciousness out of the way. So this is my proposal. The consciousness field modifies itself as the electromagnetic field and also quantum fields and the electrochemical activities. These are names and human names for modifications of consciousness. And that's all there is. And that's who you are and that's who I am. And I don't see how we can get around this. Why is this important? Well, consciousness being non-local, outside of space-time, and consciousness being who you and I are at the core of our being, um, that's not subject to birth and death and all the things that we fear in the world, because those are symbolic representations in time and finite experiences of the infinite you that is modifying itself into the experiences we have that we call space-time, causality, time, space, gravity, everything. All of that is experience. Therefore, all of that is modified consciousness. And that which is modifying itself is infinite, irreducible, borderless, um, incomprehensible, unimaginable, and uh, without cause. And yet it is the source of all causes and all experiences in the theater of space-time and causality. Um, let me know if you agree or disagree. Uh, I just have fun sharing it with you.